Welcome to Manwa Recaps, spoilers ahead, watch out, and take care. The Manwa starts with a man running at 7 a.m., then at 12 p.m. he is training Kendo, specifically 500 head strikes. 5 p.m. he's inside the gym doing the big three. For the sake of repeating this routine for two weeks, the man hands in his resignation letter. Someone asked him if he's gone crazy or something, maybe that would have been better. But we see from his eyes that there's a status window saying that the door to the end is going to open. The countdown shows two seconds left, and it begins to tick down until it finally gets to zero. We get a flashback to 15 days ago, we see in a city everyone's phones are going off, due to disaster notification and monsters. Everyone just treats it as a prank, but the sheer amount of disaster alerts kind of show it isn't. Someone begins to live stream, and shows off one of the monsters. He decided to get closer to it, and the chat spams behind and we see the orc appear directly behind him. Then we hear him scream, and the training man pulls his airpod out. Saying that scared him, asking why it's so realistic. He wonders what's happening, and we're introduced to him. His name is Lee Hoyoung, and he's 29. He says it's already too hard to make a living, yet now they are saying stuff about monsters appearing. He lets out a sigh, saying there's too many fake videos recently. Then he looks down to see a goblin in a bear trap, little out of place. He wonders what it's doing here, and tries to run away saying it's scary. But the goblin gives him the puppy dog eyes, and he says it's trying to act cute, but it's ugly as hell. And it's a monster after all, he isn't nice enough to show compassion to a monster. But he says that he has to help if it's making the puppy eyes. It shows him a picture of his family, and she begins to wipe her tears away. This is the final blow to our boy Hoyoung, after he helps her he's handed a silver goblin's pill. He's still just surprised he got a gift for helping her. He wonders what the pill does, and what's with the hologram window. He asks who the hell would eat something like this, and then the news starts to report buildings appearing all over the world, of course they are towers. Hoyoung starts to feel pressured, and he wonders if the apocalypse is truly starting. His window cracks, then an explosion occurs outside. He looks over puzzled, and hears the screams of people running away. They are all looking at something, and among the rubble we see a tower forming from underground. Hoyoung heads outside onto his balcony to see it himself. He determines himself, saying even if it may not be the best choice. It's the only thing he can do in this situation, and he eats the pill. He begins to feel a massive surge of energy. It surges to his eyes, causing them to flicker with a light blue aura. He obtains the sage's status window, which will provide him with a walkthrough with the highest rate of survival. He sees puzzle pieces as something floats down, and a book lands into his hands. He's surprised by it, and opens the book, it shines brightly and tells him he has 15 days until the end of days open. Now the flashback ends, he says he's been rigorously following it. He gave up on everything to focus on his training. He opens his eyes to see a forest, and that the door of the end is opened. He says it's different than he thought it'd be, and he finds a sword on the ground. It says the tutorial is starting now, and the aptitude test has been completed. And it gave him a weapon based on his data, which makes him a combat swordsman. He says there's too many damn windows, but he shows his stats, and readies his sword. He's low-key excited about this, and we see that he has to either survive for 60 minutes or find the exit and escape. He says if it's a tutorial it should give him time before starting the game. The sage's guide pops up its own window, saying to use this chance to kill as many monsters as possible, as finding the exit will hinder his growth. He says the sage's guide must have gotten him to train since it knew what would be happening, he decides to trust it again saying that it'd be best not to run away. A monster appears from the bushes, and we see its raccoon with a horn. He says it's cuter than he thought it'd be, but it turns ugly real quick. And leaps at him for an attack, he cuts it down in one hit, and obtains experience. He says that maybe it's weak since it's just the tutorial. And that basic swordsmanship took 2 MP, and he only has 10. So he can only use it 5 times total. So he should preserve as much MP as he can while hunting we see him instantly finish off two more raccoons. Then uses basic swordsmanship on another, as it cries and fades out. He levels up, recovering his HP and MP. Another window appears saying he can use the stat points from leveling to increase stats. He says that was perfect, since his MP was about to be depleted. Then the window flashes with a red tint, and begins to bug out and readjusts his level back to 1. Saying due to having the sage's status window, he'll level up slower. He's surprised by this, saying he can't believe there'd be a penalty to leveling up. He says that's a crazy dumb handicap, 
He opens his status window, but sees that his stat points actually didn't get reverted. He quickly realizes that this is not a penalty, but rather an overpowered ability. Well, he's the main character, of course. It jumps to a raccoon flying at him, and he swings his blade, killing it. He levels up again, but gets reset like last time, and smiles since he got stat points again. Now he's got a total of four points, and he says this will level his stats up way faster compared to normal. He says that it's time to pick out what stats he should level. He says strength and agility would be best for a swordsman, strength allows for more damage, while agility increases his speed and reflexes. But that's not what he needs the most right now, his sensitivity increases by 4. Then it jumps to another raccoon getting mobbed, poor guy. He says even with default stats he'd be able to defeat these guys. The real problem is following the guy, and killing a ton of these since they are slowing down. But with the sensitivity stat, which we see as a whopping 20 now, it's a lot easier than before. He says he can sense key at 22, then he begins to feel a murderous intent behind him, and a window says a hidden quest is activating due to all monsters being eliminated. We see a juiced out raccoon appear, the quest of course is to defeat it. He wonders what the deal with it will be, and it crushes the ground as it leaps forward at him, trying to impale him. He manages to dodge it, and does a Dark Souls roll to evade it. He says this thing is quick, but it's fitting for a boss mob. He calms himself down to avoid panic, and the boss charges at him again. He watches carefully, then manages a clean counter-attack on its stomach. A window appears, saying he's defeated the boss. He obtains gold for clearing the hidden quest, and he says he is level 7 after all. The tutorial finally finishes, and he says he didn't expect an hour to feel so long. He closes his eyes, saying surely it's over now. Then he opens it, to see himself in a room with a lot of other people. Who are all just as confused, an alarm sounds overhead. Then stops to congratulate them all on completing the tutorial. This is the lobby of the tower, and they are in the 2567 region, Hoyoung wonders what it means by lobby. He does quick maths, saying there are 14 men and 11 women. But he sees that everyone is panicking, and he says that'd be his response too, if he hadn't known what he was getting into beforehand. But he remains calm, saying he'll make it out alive. A woman asks aloud where they are, and of course we see Bunny Ear saying the tower of the end. She looks down, and why is it always a damn bunny? He introduces himself as the lower floor manager named Kum Kum. Everyone is surprised, wondering if it's a kid in a rabbit suit. Kum sighs, saying this is the normal response. Then Hoyoung says he wants to ask him something, and if it's the end of the world, what should they do now? Kum says that's a great question, and all of the players here will be participating in a game with their lives at stake. Everyone begins to freak out, and Kum says all of Earth is currently inside the tower, with the goal to climb to the top. Hoyoung asks if they can go back to their normal lives once they make it to the top. Kum says that he has no clue. Hoyoung asks the point in climbing the tower then, Kum asks if there's a need to find a meaning. And only death awaits those not willing to climb. He stops, saying a lot of people have already died in the tutorial. Hoyoung wonders why he didn't think about that before. He starts to worry about his family, and Kum asks if anyone is willing to try and kill him. Kum says he has to die, and there's a special reward to those who help him go home. Hoyoung wonders if it's a trap since Kum is level 55. He decides to watch, then the guide appears saying to help him go home. He wonders if that makes it okay to attack him. He says he's trusted the guide thus far, but this seems off. He wonders what to do, but another man says he'll do it. If he wants to die so bad he'll help him. He tells Kum not to regret it, and draws his sword charging at him. Kum stares at the blade, then decks him in the face, popping the dude's head like a zit. Causing his body to ragdoll into the wall, Kum says oops, and he didn't mean to counter-attack. All of the players begin to feel fear after what they just witnessed, and a woman kneels and screams. Hoyoung looks at the scene, and sweats nervously wondering if it was him who volunteered. Kum says it's just a mistake, and the guide asks him again to help Kum. He begins to wonder if it's lying to him. Kum asks again, who wants to help him? Hoyoung wonders why the guide would lie, then the sage's status window opens further. To reveal that he can use the sage's eye. He's curious about there being another ability. Then looks at Kum with it, and he smirks saying he understands now. Kum says he wants to go home again, Hoyoung says he'll do it, as the guide wasn't lying. Kum says he's level 1, and Hoyoung asks if that's important when it comes to doing a deed. Kum says nope, and to send him home quickly then. 
The woman before tells him to wait, and it's too dangerous. The rest also try to stop him. He tells them it's fine, he has a plan and to watch as they'll see something exciting. Kum smiles, then transforms into a burly man again, charging at Hoyoung. As the fist gets to his face, Hoyoung says there was something strange Kum said, as he said there were only 24 players, when there's 25. He wonders if it's a simple mistake, but says no way. The fear Kum being a monster all of it was intentional, the reason he said the wrong number too. Everyone screams as Kum's fist goes through Hoyoung's head. But we see a slice on Kum's chest, and Hoyoung slices him in half. The reason Kum only said 24, was that there are only that many people to begin with. The guy who exploded was a hologram, and Kum himself is also a hologram who disappears when damaged. Kum says for those with courage, the odds will be in their favor and the hologram fades out. Hoyoung sighs out of relief, then we see a pearl drop that is worth one stat point. Everyone else sees it, Hoyoung picks it up, and they begin to ask how he knew. He says he saw the blood pass through Chai Yishol, the girl who screamed. So he assumed it was a show, a bigger man approaches him saying he shouldn't take it. And if he noticed he'd have stepped up too, he shows that he's level 4. Hoyoung asks how it's a waste, and Seong says since he's level 1 he just ran form the tutorial, or was too weak. And if he's just going to die fast he should give it over. Hoyoung wonders why Bozo is being so arrogant, and crushes the orb in front of him, saying yielding isn't a hobby of his. Seong says for a bottom feeder he's quite greedy, asking if he's trying to save face because of his low level. Hoyoung says the wisest thing he can do is avoid people like him, but how long would he able able to? The voice comes back over the speakers, saying their starting gold will be given out now. It tells them they can use the gold in the shop, and gold will be given in accordance to the mobs you killed in the tutorial. Seong tells him to consider himself lucky, the voice says the most gold a player has currently is 7,400. Everyone starts to feel jealous, and Seong says he wishes he did better. Jin Zong, says whoever it is must be amazing. Of course it's Hoyoung who is all of the gold, but he doesn't want to reveal it since everyone got so jealous over a single stat point earlier. The shop begins to open, and you can either buy items, level your skills or increase stats. Hoyoung chooses the stat option for the first 2,800 gold, which gives him 28 stats and a leftover of 4,600 gold. Seong wonders why leveling stats cost so much, Hoyoung levels his basic swordsmanship, then instantly upgrades his drip since he can't keep wearing a tracksuit. Yishol calls out to him, saying she wants some advice, he asks why she's asking a level 1. She says that she was impressed by his bravery. We see from her window she's a healer. He asks how much gold she has, and she says 800. Which proves that she's honest. He asks if she likes to exercise, she says she doesn't mind walking, but not really. He says her stamina might be lacking, and she says that's right. He says she should invest in that, and she can't use the items for long despite the gold she spends on it. The voice says the first floor will commence soon, so to create a three-man party. Those who do not choose will be put into a random party. They are given 30 minutes, Hoyoung says this is happening faster than he thought. Jin Zong proposes to everyone that they all say their classes. Players started to create teams with the players they want, Yishol is Hoyoung's first party member, and he doesn't feel like there's a reason to refuse her. But nobody else wanted to since he's only level 1. But he understands since it doesn't seem very enticing to have a level 1 swordsman since there are so many level 4s who are relaxed. So he'll have to draw with the randoms. Plot convenience ensues, the voice says that the incomplete parties will be filled randomly now. And the first mission will commence now, Seong sighs saying he's unlucky, to be paired up with this leech. Hoyoung says he's not surprised that he's unpopular despite being level 4. Hoyoung wonders if he'll even get him to cooperate, but decides he needs to make it work. In order to survive in here, the mission is to annihilate the Kobold tribe, and they have 12 hours. Seong tells them he'll do it, so don't get in his way. Hoyoung reminds him it's a team mission, but Seong says he's carrying for free, so why is he yapping so much? Hoyoung sighs, saying sure he'll see how good he is. Seong says if he was going to follow him in the first place why complain, and tells him to get his act together. Seol is curious if their party will be okay. Since she can tell Hoyoung and Seong are opposite of one another. As they walk through the woods, we see that there are a lot of bugs in the trees. Hoyoung comments on it, saying it must be because they are in the mountains. He's curious about something, but Yishol calls out to him, saying the kobolds must be strong right. He says there's a chance it's stronger than the raccoon 
but since they are still level 1 it should be manageable. But tells her to stay on guard since it's called the Tower of the End after all, she says okay. Then we finally see a kobold. Which I assume most of us were expecting small little dog creature things, but hell nah we get this roided out Kujo beast. Hoyoung says this is too different compared to the raccoon. Yishol asks what the plan is, he tells her they need to check the surroundings first since there could be more kobolds. Seong steps out, saying you shouldn't hide like a coward. He leaps towards the kobold, which just looks at him and he punches it in the face saying you're level 1. Hoyoung and Yishol watch, wondering what's about to happen, and Seong smiles confidently. Only for the kobold to have barely even moved. Seong says fine then, starting to smack it in the head repeatedly. Hoyoung says he didn't expect him to be so stubborn. Yishol says she'll help, and goes to heal Seong. Hoyoung says he doesn't sense any more kobolds yet, but watches Seong whittle down the first one. He says with Yizial's help he'll definitely bring it down. But he notices how little damage he's doing, and wonders if there's a weakness to the kobolds. The guide warns him that the kobolds are passive, and only attack if attacked first. Which means Seong started shit for no reason. But he says the positive aspect is they need to catch a few for research purposes. He scrolls through the guide, and sees something. Seong uses a skill called Stone Fist, and punches at the kobold. But it dodges, and hits a tree. Which causes it to break, and lands on another kobold's head. This one though is a level 6, and is pissed now. It tosses the tree aside like a toy, and charges at Seong. Who says this feels like he's in trouble, and he wonders why Hoyoung isn't helping. He sees he isn't there anymore, and wonders if he's run off. As the kobold goes to hit him, Yishol swings and tells Seong this is dangerous. But she trips and falls onto the floor, she sees a shadow loom over, and turns around to see the kobold going to attack her. A fruit flies at the back of the kobold's head, and Hoyoung's sword goes into it and he slices the kobold's back with the fruit's juice. Causing it to bubble and swell. Then it goes all over its body and explodes. Causing Hoyoung to have effectively one shot the level 6 kobold. They are both surprised to see him come back and Hoyoung says no wonder the bugs weren't eating this fruit. As they are poisonous apples, which the kobolds happen to be vulnerable to. He realizes this is the key to the mission, Seyoung grits his teeth, as Hoyoung helps Yishol off the floor. He says he didn't expect another one to be here, and if he was late it'd be a rougher situation. She says it's a relief he made it, but asks where he went. He goes to reply, but Seyoung cuts him off, calling him a loser like usual. He says he was just hiding away while it was dangerous. Then after he lands a few hits, he just steals his kill. Hoyoung says the guy may be level 4, but he's an SSS rank yapper. And Seyong stomps off, Hoyoung sighs saying he's gonna have a hard time. At the kobold village, we see Seyong brawling with the kobolds, while in the back Yishol and Hoyoung are effortlessly killing them. But he's a man and will only use his fist, so we gotta give him some respect for that boys. He gets hit by them and comes back with a big punch, of course it's useless since the other two are just happily eliminating all of the kobolds. He wonders why the hell it's so easy for them, and he gets bonked on the head. Then they start jumping him while he's on the floor. He starts to cry as they stomp him saying he wants help. Then he stops getting hit, and looks up to see the monsters slashed with the poison and their heads explode. Hoyoung stretches his hand out to him, and says he'll take over the bus from here on out, telling him to enjoy the ride. Seong makes a nasty ass face, and turns into an anime girl saying, thank you bro. They clear the mission, they exit the portal, and Seong starts to cringe since he recalls he just bowed his head to a level 2, even when he is level 8. He says it's over for him if this leaks, but he's a man so he won't go back on his word. Okay I like him, Hoyoung wonders if he has to poop since he's shaking. Yishol points out that nobody else is around, and Hoyoung says they cleared it faster since they found the kobold's weakness. Seong's smooth brain only picks up on them being first. Yishol says this wasn't luck, his observational skill helped them. Hoyoung says it was thanks to their support, he says he feels like a fraud. We see some other teams come out from the portal and he points out that it's Jinzong and Junho's parties. He says they must have found the apples too, and wonders if the other parties will make it back. We see another party come back, but only two people. They fall to the floor, and Yishol asks where the third one is. The girl cries, saying it's only the two of them. The voice comes back, saying the first mission has been completed by all parties now. Yishol says to wait since there's still people missing, and the voice says six parties that have returned, and eight people failed to return. Hoyoung says if eight died from this, 
He wonders how many more are going to die, before they make it to the top. The voice begins to give calculations for the mission, for those who made it back alive of course, and cleared it. They'll all receive 1000 gold each. Hoyoung since he got 2000 gold for both bonuses, it's a bit lacking compared to the tutorial. But he'll take what he can get. So he'll save his gold, someone asks who got first, and Hoyoung says he should reveal it since Jin Xiong's party came second they know. He goes to say it, but Seong says proudly it was them, and seems hella excited. People give a weird reaction that he was first, and he asks if they are mad. Hoyoung says he's just glad the attention is off of him. They start to stare at Hoyoung saying a level 2 got first place, and how much he got carried. Nothing but people flaming him, Yishol tries to tell them the truth, but he stops her saying they won't listen anyways. So he'll just have to show them, Jin Zong claps his hands, telling everyone to calm down, so they can focus on their survival. Junho says that's right, they need to cheer up. Everyone starts to cheer up saying this will be easy, they just need to work together. A light forms on one of the torches on the wall, but it quickly turns to purple and red. It lights up the entire room, and warnings begin to spam everyone's notifications. They wonder what's going on, and the window says that the survival rate of the first level is below average, so a penalty mission is put into place. And the death mission will begin soon. Hoyoung is curious, then it says to choose one candidate the player with the most votes will carry out the mission. A window appears saying 5 minutes left, the window says if you don't vote, you'll vote for yourself. And to be voted here means that the person will die. Everyone starts to panic, and look around the room to pick who to send to their death. But Yishol rationally tells them if they all vote themselves, nobody will be sent out. A man asks what'll happen if they all have to do it, and the time keeps ticking down until a woman points at Hoyoung pointing out he has a 1 with Junho's name by it. He's only level 2, so of course he caught a vote. Yishol begins to worry for him, and Junho says he's sorry, but they need to choose. Hoyoung says he expected it, but he's a bit taken aback. Since he doesn't want to die after all. Yishol says it's not too late, and tries to convince them again. Hoyoung says it's fine, and Lardas had a point, nobody knows if it'd work or not. And that trust is already broken now. As time ticked away the votes above his head begins to increase one by one, he's sure there was more than one reason. But of course the biggest one is the fact that he's the lowest level. Yishol starts reprimanding them, asking how they can do this. Hoyoung says everyone's masks fell off, and they began to reveal their true nature. Seong says sorry sir, and makes a thumbs down. Bro lost the little respect I had for him. Now Hoyoung has 10 votes, with the timer ending the portal to the death mission begins to open. We see a giant red gate appears, and some people start to feel regret. Yishol covers her mouth and begins to cry. Seong laughs, saying now his problem is solved. Hoyoung says he's their sacrificial lamb, with faces of guilt and relief around him he had no choice, but to be the lamb they picked him to be. Except, this was the best choice for him as the guide recommended it. He walks into the portal, and the guide says he'll get a satisfactory reward, so he's excited as hell for it. The flames in the room turn back to blue, and people begin to talk about their choices. Jin Zong asks Yishol if she's okay, and that it feels regretful since they are meant to be companions. Seong says regretful my ass, and they get what they deserve. Jin Zong asks what he means, he says surely he could tell by the levels alone that Hoyoung was a leech, and took the free carry. Yishol asks what he's talking about, since Hoyoung was the one who carried them. Seong says nah, and he just last hit the kobold after he got it low. She asks how delusional he can be, when he got saved by Hoyoung. Then he recalls how effortlessly he beat them and wonders if he has a skill to hide his level. But there's no way he makes it back, right? Jin Zong says he hopes he's as good as Yishol says he is, since he wants him to return alive. Yishol recalls Hoyoung's words, and wipes her tears away saying she believes in him. He'll surely return, Jin Zong smiles and says he's sure he will too. Inside of the death mission, we see a kobold camp, and he says it looks the same as before, but it feels ominous. But he was going to vote for himself if things didn't work out and it seems good. But it seems like he'll need to have a little chat with Seong after. It says the Kobold tribe's hunting group has returned, and we see them. They see him over their allies' corpses, and one specifically behind them is giant and red. The mission says to kill the enraged chieftain and hunting group. The boss is a level 12 and lets out a roar. The guide tells him that the chieftain is weak to poison like the rest. Hoyoung crushes one of the fruits, and squeezes the juice onto his blade. He says a level 12 is nearly impossible for him to beat. 
and if anyone else were here they'd for sure die, one of the kobolds attack him, but he dodges their spear and instantly cuts three of the kobolds with his sword. He says now that the side mobs are all taken care of, all that's left is the big boy. He decides it's time to see how strong the boss of a death mission will be, and charges in at it. It blocks his sword, and begins to shift its hands backwards when their swords clash. Hoyoung recognizes that it minimized the impact by pulling back at the time of impact. So it's definitely a skilled fighter. The boss begins to run away, and he's confused since he thought it'd stay and fight. The boss squeals as he stabs it in the ass while it runs away. He says this is not what he expected at all. But says whatever, it's good for him at least. He slices again at its back, but the blade doesn't pierce its skin. The boss stands still entirely, and stares up. Hoyoung looks up to see it's a full moon, and the boss's eyes begin to change. And it instantly slices Hoyoung, cutting open some of his chest. Seong says since they can't do anything about someone who is dead, he'll carry the rest of them through the tower. Yishol ignores him and prays for Hoyoung. He sees her and scoffs, saying he's obviously dead, so why bother? She barks at him, saying he should have a conscience, and asks what he'll do if Hoyoung comes back. They keep arguing, and then a portal appears, she's shocked and looks over to see Hoyoung. Junho is actually excited that his guilt is gone, and we see Hoyoung's wounds begin to heal, as he's made it back. Back to the fight, the guide warned him of the chieftain's eyes turning red, and he realizes this is what it meant. After the attack, he puts his back to a tree, and sees the boss's health begins to tick down as it runs at him. He says it's just one hit away, but it's charging him like a rhino so how can he do this? As it gets closer it thrusts its sword at him, he dodges and it pierces the tree. He says holy shit that could have been me. Then realizes that while a sword may not cut a wall, a nail can pierce it. So while he's been subconsciously using the sword for only slashing. He's been sleeping on piercing, like the boss did. He decides to use its own momentum and the boss leaps directly at him, as it gets close he readies his sword. Stabbing through it, by using its weight and momentum against it, and now stabbing has been added to his swordsmanship skill. Flashback ends, Yishol runs up to him and leaps at him all happily. But she hits a wall known as Seong who sends her flying backwards, she is confused as she sees him bear hugging Hoyoung. He's sweating nervously, saying he knew he'd make it back, calling him big bro again. This guy is goofy, but I like it. Hoyoung wonders what the hell is going on, and Seong laughs loudly saying of course a lowly mission couldn't stop Hoyoung the strongest in the universe. Hoyoung just wants to beat his ass. A man calls out to Hoyoung, asking if he really cleared it. We see that the man is a level, he says if he cleared it surely he got experience. By why is he only level 2? The rest start to think about it too, and Hoyoung says he thought he got used to it. Since he was ridiculed for having good grades, and others thought he was a cheater, weirdos. They start to say maybe he just hid away and waited for it to finish like he did in the tutorial. He clenches his fist saying he knew people wouldn't change their prejudice like this. But he needs to stop this now. Cal tells them all to stop running their mouths, and she begins to heal herself after running into a wall. She says he proved himself by surviving the mission. Hoyoung is glad she's defending him. Seong steps up saying big sis is right and not only did they fail to hold a party welcoming back Hoyoung his big bro, the strongest in the world, the main character. They ruined the mood. He hits a leaning front double by on them asking if they are crazy. Hoyoung thinks he's nuts. But even so, he's reassured by how he's acting. But if he wants them to stop, he has to show them something convincing. He tells them all he has to show them something, it jumps to after he told them how he cleared it, and he shows the boss's blade, flexing that it's a rare rank with 15% attack power. They say that's cheating, and Jinzong says he's surprised that he kept a poisonous apple with him. And says that the item is more valuable than experience towards their survival. Hoyoung mockingly says our survival, they seem to have forgotten they just all voted him to die. Their faces freeze up, as the atmosphere turns tense. Yishol is worried, and Junho struggles, but says he's right. He justified it thinking it couldn't be helped, but in the end it was pure selfishness. Even though they knew voting for him when he's the lowest level was the same as silently targeting him. He bows, saying that he's truly sorry for what he's done to him. But he's truly glad that he's returned. Hoyoung sees him crying, a girl sighs asking why he's going so far, saying he came back so what's the issue with it? Junho asks how dare she, we learn her name is Seo Yunjin, he asks if she doesn't feel the slightest bit of guilt. She says that's not for him to say when he voted for him first. Hoyoung says he brought it up not to reprimand them all, 
It's to stop it from happening again. They must have caught on during the death mission voting, but the tower is trying to divide them. It's provoking distrust, causing conflicts and probably sending them on a path to ruin. They all start to believe his words, and he says that he believes returning from the death mission is an opportunity. Because he's proved that their actions can defy the tower's intentions. Jin Zong asks what his plan for the future is. He says he'll search for ways that'll allow the most people to survive and keep climbing. They'll climb together, eventually reaching the end. He looks up confidently saying they'll be able to get their old lives back. They start to feel hopeful too, saying he's right and they can. Yishol says everyone here should group together, Junho starts to see Hoyoung as nothing but a generous man, and says he shouldn't have judged him. Kum says how unfortunate, but this next mission will be a survival game. They are all surprised to see him, saying shouldn't he be at home when he got sent off. Hoyoung starts to ask about it, and Kum says it's what he's thinking. The mission this time around will be a battle royale, among all of them. But it's at a lower level, so they can just cheer up. He says he'll explain the rules. In the level 2 mission there will be 16 players and 16 doppelgangers. So there will be 32 people total. He says the conditions to clear is to kill all the doppelgangers. They'll not only have the same stats, but the same memories too so it won't be easy. The most important rule is there are no rewards for a player killing a doppelganger, but if a player kills a player then they'll obtain stats and gold. So it could be a huge opportunity for them all, they start to say he's just asking for them to kill each other. Kum says finally, every 30 minutes there isn't a kill, everyone will be summoned to the lobby and face a huge disaster. We see a circle appear in the room with a purple aura, and a giant hand begins to come out of it towards the players. We see the mob is question marked, and Hoyoung looks up at it. And it starts to smash its palm to where he's standing. Hoyoung asks how the hell he's meant to fight this. If you've watched till the end comment, Blobfish, to let me know. Subscribe for more videos like this, leave a like or a comment to help the channel out. Thanks for watching.